half in the bag. I like to eat cheeseburgers. Oh my God, the North Korean missile is still headed towards my house, which is also still on the bottom of Lake Michigan. Hey Mike, do you remember North Korea? No. Hey Jay, do you remember the movie The Interview? What a hit. Oh no, the missile's still gonna blow us up? No, it's not. It's gonna dislodge us and send us back to the surface. My plan's gonna work. Oh, I think it just hit the house. I think. Oh, I guess it was a dud. Oh, thank goodness for faulty North Korean technology. What a bunch of hacks. Oh! Dude, he got it. Got what? The joke I just made. What was the joke? Hacks. Like with the computer, you do the hacking? They did, they did the, Sony, the Sony hack thing. Oh, is that that thing where everyone saw Jennifer Lawrence's boobs? No, no, Jay, that was X-Men. Mm. Well, speaking of duds, do you want to watch Inherent Vice? Absolutely. That's the new P.T. Barnum joint, right? Yes. Okay. Get out! If it's a quiet night out at the beach and your ex-old lady suddenly out of nowhere shows up with a story about her current billionaire land developer boyfriend and his wife and her boyfriend and a plot to kidnap the billionaire and throw him in a loony bin... I need your help, Doc. Maybe you should just look the other way. <laughs> Inherent Vice is the latest film from acclaimed filmmaker Paul Thomas Anderson. It stars Joaquin Phoenix as a hippie private investigator in Los Angeles, trying to solve the mystery of what this film's plot is. Mike, what did you think of Inherent Vice? Jay, do you remember a time when you could understand what Paul Thomas Anderson movies were about? Uh, I was excited to see this. The trailer looked good. I was like, eh, I, I wasn't the biggest fan of The Master. Uh, I was like uh, uh, a big so what after it was over. I thought, it, I thought um, Philip Seymour Hoffman was great. Yes. Joaquin Phoenix was great. Uh, I mean, okay, you can't, you can't go wrong with acting and the directing in Paul Thomas Anderson films, top notch. Uh, but The Master, when it was over, I was like, what? Uh, oh, uh, she was the master. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> what, what am I supposed to get shivers on my spine? See, I remember when we I talked about the master on an older half in the bag. You had not seen it at that point, and that yeah. was I had just seen it, and I didn't know what to make of it. Um, but I had an interest in revisiting it and, and trying to kind of get a better understanding of it, which I've done a couple times. I've grown to really um, like it. We are talking about Inherent Vice, which is based on a novel by Thomas Pynchon, um, who is both. Uh, despised and praised in the literary world, from what I understand. I, I can't imagine why. Uh, some people say his books are completely nonsensical, and then the literary snobs say that they're brilliant. And I think I think the the same kind of applies to this movie. Um, and when we saw this, uh, five guys walked in with beards and glasses, and were giggling the whole time. And, and, and I was like, oh, this is a film snob. G giggling like, oh, this is clever, I get this, okay. And, um, they, and we, uh, we heard them chatting in the lobby afterwards, like, so the drug cartel was like they understood the plot, but yeah. th the real truth is no one understood anything that was happening in this movie, <laughs> and those that did are lying. <laughs> um. Whoa. Are you all right? Am I? Are you? Ordinarily, we're the ones asking the questions. And your question is, what side am I on? Good question. Wrong answer. I think some scenes are supposed to be less literal than others. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I mean, yes, the plot is, is dense to the point where I would say convoluted, probably. Uh, but my biggest problem with the movie was I think Paul Thomas Anderson is great. I've loved every movie he's made. Uh, it took me a while to warm up to the master, but they all show that he has a very clear understanding of, of the visual language of film. 
They're great movies. His early ones, a little like, look at me, I'm a filmmaker show off -y. Eased up on that. Um, mm -hmm. So, but, but he's shown that he knows how to put together a movie. He's very smart when it comes to the way his movies are shot and, and edited. And this movie was so baffling because every scene is Joaquin Phoenix walks into a room, he starts conversing with one other person, and then the entire scene, close up, close up, close up. There's a few exceptions, but there's so many scenes, one after the other, where it's just him walking into the room and then them talking endlessly about a character that isn't in that scene. So then he leaves and then he walks into another room and he starts talking to that character that they were just talking about. You can have a convoluted plot that doesn't quite make sense, but you're really interested in your main characters and watching them go through this, the movie of the story is the is interesting part. Or you can have uh, a, a plot that's fun to, to develop and sort of so-so main characters. This head was kind of in between. Joaquin Phoenix does a really good job. His performance is great. There's lots of little subtleties. I love the part when she shows him the, the picture mm. and he screams. Oh God, yeah. Ah! Mm -hmm. I, the, so much good <laughs> stuff there. And, and him like making all the faces and he's, he's great. He's a great actor, but his character, uh, well, that's a movie that a lot of people have compared this to is The Big Lebowski. Yes, um, yes. Which is an example of that movie has a convoluted plot. But fun but characters. But it doesn't matter at all with The Big Lebowski because it's not what it's about really. No. Um, and it's, yeah, all the characters are memorable and fun. And this has elements of that, but it's more like the scenes are propped up by the strength of the performances, not the characters. One, one exception to the, the close-up close -up shooting is a great sequence with Martin Short. Oh, yeah. Uh, and that's a scene where it's like, oh, now it feels like a Paul Thomas Anderson movie where there's this like tension and this escalation and it's got a real driving force to it. And then that scene ends and we get back to just people talking endlessly. Mm. I actually get to have a heart attack. Actually, my heart is racing like a little It was almost to the point of comedy how convoluted it was to where... I, like, I thought maybe that's where they were going yeah, with it. But. Yeah, and, then, and it's going to be fun watching this character stumble his way through this plot and not really uncover everything. But then there were scenes that were slightly realistic and dark, and it's like, oh, are we supposed to be taking this seriously? And that was the problem, too, was the tone, where there is comedic stuff. And, and there's some very funny moments in this movie, but then there's so much where it's just played completely straight and dramatic, and it, it's like... I don't know, it, it didn't have a, a consistent balance of those elements. Yeah. Did I get you? You know what I was thinking the whole time is that this movie would make a really good book that I don't understand. I remember seeing the trailer a long time ago. I was like, hey, that looks great. When does that come out? January. Okay, well, I'll wait for that. And then I, I'm watching it and I was like, this feels like a book. And then I was like, oh yeah, this was based on a book where it was like, boom, it, I was reminded of that fact. And I think it was happening during like two characters walk in and talk mm -hmm. for 40 minutes where it felt like the dialogue was in a book mm -hmm. where it wasn't written for the screen. I, I think this was a pretty direct adaptation of the book okay. from what I understand. Then it was a book on a screen. It was a book on a screen. Um, and and that, that was part of the problem was that there were no really strong visuals yeah. that stand out. And it was more, it, it felt like a pulpy, uh, it almost felt like film noir in the 70s mm -hmm. as, as opposed to like a black and white 1950s. Which could uh, be great. I will say this is, a, this is an actor movie that I would say obviously all these actors are a high enough caliber where they don't have to do this, but each individual scene felt like a great scene to put on your demo reel. That's, it felt like a series of scenes from a demo reel. If, uh, if high caliber for actors still created demo reels, Martin Short is passing his out to agents. <laughs> He may still be doing demo reels, yeah. He has this uploaded to YouTube right now. What, well, what was the point of the movie? Uh, uh, was it to entertain people? What, is, what are the points the point, of The point movies? of the movie was to do a, a very literal adaptation of this book. And nobody read. I guess. I don't know, maybe this guy is a big deal. The there there are people that love him, they think he's a brilliant writer, and then I know other people that I, I am not the most well-read person. I don't, I have not read his novels, but I know people that are very uh, into literature and into writing that say that his books are incredibly frustrating and they can't get through them, which, seeing this movie, that seems to make sense. 
Doc may not be a do-gooder, but he's done good. But I do know that I love you. And I know that if you love me too, what a wonderful world this would be. When, when I sat down to watch this, I was told that it's frustrating. That's the perfect word. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's, hard, it's a little hard to follow. And I was like, okay. And so normally at movies, you know, I'm like playing on my cell phone. I'm in the theater. In the theater. I'm talking on my cell phone. Sometimes I take a nap. Okay. Other times I leave for like 30 to 40 minutes. Um, you know, I, get, I run some errands. I come back. So most of the time I'm not paying too much attention. But this one I'm like, okay, I got to pay attention. And I'm listening to every word that, that the characters are saying. Then I found myself like not enjoying it. Yeah. Like, I want to sit back. I, I don't want to shut my brain off, as the expression is, goes, but I want to, to sit back and, and enjoy a movie, become immersed in it, and, and not have to sit there and go, you know, it's like doing math. <laughs> That's kind of how it felt. Sure. Like, I've got to pay attention. Felt like I was, like, taking a test, and I'm like, okay, okay, okay don't lose track. The second I lose track, I'm going to not know what's happening. And so I found myself more of a, a, a laborer, uh, as opposed to enjoyment. Yeah, the movie seems to be challenging you to to stay with it. Yeah. Well, you know, I I can appreciate a mature, heavy movie. Absolutely. Sure. I just want to understand what's happening in it. I, I think that's fair enough. Yeah, that's all I ask. I just want to understand what's happening. Or else I'll just go watch Transformers 5. <laughs> well, I don't understand what's happening in that either. So, Mike, would you recommend Inherent Vice? No. No. No, 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 no. Ah, no. I, I have to give this one a disappointing non-recommendation. I want to recommend it. It's got lots of things in it that I really like. Lots of great elements, lots of great acting, but I just didn't connect with it. If you do go see this movie, make sure you pay attention to everyone's fucking name. If a character is mentioned in a scene, oh, yeah. make sure you remember that name or you will be even more lost than you probably would be otherwise. What a wonderful world this would be. Coming just in time for Christmas. Inherent vice, more like incoherent vice. Well, I've got another plan to get us to the goddamn surface. Oh, really? What's that? Well, I'm gonna draw a picture of the Prophet Muhammad, and then when the Muslims come down to kill us, we're gonna hijack their submarines and take them back to the surface. Mm, I don't know about that one, Mr. Plinkett. It sounds pretty dangerous. What else do you got? Hmm. Do you remember when I told you I used to be a hot air balloon pilot? No. No. Hey, Mike, did you know Mr. Plinkett used to be a hot air balloon pilot? Or racer? Or whatever the fuck you call it? Hmm, I did not know that, Jay. I wonder how that'll come into play later. Oh. Oh. Well, I found my old hot air balloon up in my attic. So? So, my doctor says I have a condition called hyperflatulence. That means I fart a whole bunch. More than Mickey Rourke. And sometimes, even more than Jay Leno. Oh my God. My doctor said that if I eat just one bean, I'll fart a full 35 pounds of metric pressure. That means if a mouse were living near my filthy asshole, I could literally kill it. Oh my God, this is my life. So Mr. Plinkett, your plan is to fill your hot air balloon with farts and float us to the surface? Yes. I'm going to eat those industrial sized cans of beans, and then I'm going to fart a lot. Really? This is where the show's gone? I mean, Jay, did you hear that the Oscars have been announced? I did hear that. Should we talk about them? Yes. We never have before, but... We haven't, but, Maybe, you maybe know, we will this year. Now it. So, Mike, were you surprised to see that Boyhood had so many nominations? Not at all, Jay. It's truly an amazing film. Terrible, awkward, cringe-inducing dialogue, flat, boring cinematography, 
no story to be invested at all in, plus a boring, lifeless character that we all end up hating at the end. And don't forget, Mike, it's really long, too. I would say it almost feels twice its length. <laughs> That's right, Jay. But did you know that it took 12 years to make? Nothing has ever taken 12 years to make. With all that hype, do you think it'll win Best Picture at the Oscars? I don't see how it couldn't. With all this critical praise, it'd be like, say, losing a football game in the fourth quarter with only five minutes to go and you're up 19 to seven. <laughs> you know, it's not gonna happen. That's right, Mike. So Jay, what's your pick for Best Picture? Boyhood. Mike, what's your pick for Best Picture? Boyhood. Boyhood? Boyhood. Boyhood. Boyhood, it's a fucking amazing. Boyhood. 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 Boyhood, it's amazing. Boyhood. It took 12 years to make. Did you know that it took 12 years to make? Dude, Boyhood. It's amazing. It's magical. You can see a kid grow up on screen. It's fucking magical. Boyhood. 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 It took 12 years to make. Did Boyhood take 12 years to make? It took a really long time to make. It took longer than it took them to make the Great Wall of China. No, he Did you know that the actor in Boyhood grew up on screen before your eyes? Holy shit, that's never happened before. It, uh, there was this thing called the 7-Up series that is Nor a very long-running television series. I mean, did you know it took them seven years to film Roseanne? Boyhood! Academy Awards, please make Boyhood this year's Best Picture winner. Dear Academy members, please vote for Boyhood. It took them 12 years to make. I think they should retroactively give Boyhood the best picture for the last 12 years of the Oscars. That's a very, very good idea, Jay. And if Boyhood wins best picture, they should revoke the Oscars for all last 12 best pictures. Yes. Because Boyhood was being filmed while, you know, fucking trash movies got the best picture. <sighs> Gotta respect that kind of artistic determination to stick with a project for 12 years. And 12 years a slave did not take them 12 years to make. No, I mean, it's a, it's a fucking misleading title. They filmed that shit over a year. How lazy can you be? 12 years ago was 12 years. 12 years or mm -hmm. 12 years? 12 years, 12 years. Uh, nobody's ever done that before. 12 years is 12 years of this. 12 years was on 12 years. 12 year period. It took 12 years to make yeah. this movie, That's yeah. 12 years. It's 12 year long. 12 years. 12 years. But 12 so, years it took you? 12 years. 12 years of your life. <laughs> 12 years of 12 years from now. 12 years is 12 years. Of 12 years is 12 years. 12 years. So, oh, 12 years, everybody gets old. And people would ask, well, so, so what happens in the movie? And I was like, not much. The New York Times calls Boyhood one of the most extraordinary movies of 2014, or for that matter, the 21st century so far. Well, Jay, I have here a list of all the nominees. Uh, I guess we could talk about them. Sure. We could talk about the Oscars, or we could go see the new George Lucas masterpiece, Strange Magic. I thought he retired. Why is he making a Strange Magic, magic films? I think he, I think he, he saved up money for his retirement, and it didn't go as far as he was hoping. Mm. He had like a like a piggy bank full of money, and he yeah. thought that would last the rest of his life, and it lasted six months. Yeah. So now he's like, shit, I got to make animated children's films now. Yeah. Bernie Madoff was his financial advisor. George Lucas is so desperate for work, he's showing up in the background of unrelated documentaries now. The thing is, they call it pyro processing, but it's a molten salt process. They're dissolving this thing in a molten salt and they're doing electrochemistry on it. Well, Jay, our first category, let's go with best actor because we're sexist. Just like the Academy Awards. Just like, the, yeah, there's not enough women in the best actor category. <laughs> um, <laughs> we have Steve Carell in Foxcatcher, Bradley Cooper in American Snipper, Benedict Cumberbunch in The Imitation Game, and Michael Keaton, Birdman, Eddie Redmayne in The Theory of Everything, which I think is the Stephen Hawking film. Yes. Uh, I've seen Foxcatcher. Have you seen Foxcatcher? I have not seen Foxcatcher. Uh, I've heard mixed things. Yeah, well, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a really good movie, actually. It's, a, it's definitely a performance movie that surrounds completely around Steve Carell. It's, he does a good job. He has a, a prosthetic on his face to make him look more like guy. Yeah. Um, whenever, whenever I see a pr uh, predominantly comedic actor in a role like that, I'm always a little annoyed 
mm. like where they're going to such an extreme to say, look at me, I'm dramatic now. It always feels like a, like a little bit of a, an ego trip thing. I haven't seen Foxcatcher, I don't know. but I could see that. The, the role is very subdued though. It's not like I'm really going over the top. Okay. And, and it, it's almost like, like you're watching it and you're like, oh, this is Michael Scott, like <laughs> it, which is a good thing, obviously, for an actor where you're like, okay. I, I knew nothing about the, re, the true life story, and it was based on a true event, um, and I knew something bad happened, and that's all I knew. Okay. So if you're going to see this movie, do not look up what happens in real life, ah. because it's not that uh, incredible or amazing of a, of a true life story. It's very simple, okay. but it's a really interesting character movie. Can, um, I, can I ask you, uh, by the end, you don't have to get into spoilers, but did they catch the fox? Did they? Yeah. Okay. What does the fox say? What the fox say? Bradley Cooper, American Sniper. Haven't seen it yet. Uh, no, I've yet to see anything that I'm terribly impressed by Bradley Cooper in, though. He just seems like generic actor man to me. Yeah, okay, that's fair, I guess. I don't know. I, 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 was he in that movie, uh, uh, Man Running Around in Garbage Bags, what was that called? <laughs> oh, the Silver, Silver Linings, Linings Playbook, Playbook, which I also haven't seen. Oh, you haven't seen that? I haven't seen that one. Yeah, it is good. He's good. He's good. Okay. He's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 My favorite performance by him is Rocket Raccoon in Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> he's a good actor. Uh, one of the big, what people are saying is a big snub is Jake Gyllenhaal for uh, Nightcrawler. How does that happen? That was not even a nomination. That's all anyone talked about with that movie was his performance. He was the most interesting part. I, I, well, he is the most interesting part, but I think that is because he's so good at it. I, I think it's a great performance. Uh, I, it's a matter of opinion, but I, sure. I, didn't, I wasn't like blown away by his performance. Yeah, I, some people are upset that he's not nominated. And I guess we should point out, uh, we don't have any sort of investment in the Academy Awards. I don't care about awards. We're I can't speak Academy for you. Numbers. Michael Keaton, Birdman. Great performance, and uh, Benedict Cumberbunch, Humberto Cabbage Patch in <laughs> The Imitation Game, also a really good film. I haven't seen that one either. And uh, I have not seen, we, we, I have not seen The Theory of Everything. No, The Theory of Everything is one of those movies that every year there's at least one of those where it feels like it exists solely to get Oscar nominations. It's not made for an audience, it's just made to win awards. Well, Jay, let's move on to Best Actress. We didn't talk about Michael Keaton and Birdman. We said it was good. Go ahead and talk about him. Uh, Birdman, it should win everything because it's Birdman and it's different. That's not what the Oscars like though. They don't like different. They like uh, satisfying and conventional. Yeah, Boyhood's gonna win everything. <laughs> All right, on to Best Actress. Okay. Uh, I don't know who's nominated for this either. Let's see. Marion Cotillard, Two Days, One Night. No fucking clue. <laughs> Felicity Jones, uh, The Theory of Everything. Of course, Theory of Everything is an Oscar movie. Is that the, the, uh, Stephen Hawking's love interest? I, I'm I, assuming so. Julianne I can Moore. see, I don't even know who that actress is and I haven't seen the movie, but I can already picture what that role is. Uh, Julianne Moore, Still a Lice, which <laughs> she attempts to remove lice from her hair, as, uh, as I've seen in the, the ad for the film. She's pulling lice out of her hair. Um, although the singular of lice is louse, so Somebody's getting fired over that. Uh, Rose Rosamund Pike, Gone Girl, uh, and then <laughs> Reese Reese Witherspoon in Wild. Wild's a more recent movie. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Um, a more recent movie. Uh, I, uh, uh, Rosamund Pike, is that her name from Gone Girl? She's really good in that movie. She I, like Julianne, I like Julianne Moore in pretty much everything. She's a, she's a classy lady and she always gives a, a great performance. Um, wild, uh, wild backpack film. I'm still hungry for beans. Cleansing thing to get drugs out of her system or something that goes backpacking across this country. I think I saw a trailer, I don't remember, but I don't care. What's next, Jay? <laughs> Our Oscar discussion. <laughs> uh, well, we have Best Supporting Actor. 
Uh, Robert Duvall for The Judge. Robert Duvall's a great actor. I don't know this movie. Ethan Hawke for Boyhood. Edward Norton in Birdman. Mark Ruffalo in Foxcatcher. And J.K. Simmons in Whiplash, which is, that's what I keep hearing about that Whiplash movie, yeah. is it's worth it just for him. But yeah, Ethan Hawke's really good in Boyhood. The movie should have been about the parents in that movie. Ethan Hawke is a solid actor. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah my, my vote is for Mark Ruffalo and Foxcatcher. Although you can't really you really vote for anything, except for Boyhood. Um, of course, yeah. Uh, you, can, you don't even have to see the other films, just vote for Boyhood. But you can't really vote for, you have a solid, solid pick unless you've seen the other um, nominees, sure. in my opinion. I mean, well, that's why I don't have a solid pick for anything. One, I haven't seen all the movies, and two, I don't care about the Oscars. <laughs> Edward Norton is great in Birdman. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's great in Birdman. As far as I'm concerned, as far as like all these Oscar nominated movies, for me, like Birdman should be celebrated more just for being something so unique. But mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just so many great performances in it. But we also have Best Supporting Actress, uh, Patricia Arquette for Boyhood, who's probably I think that's probably the best uh, role in that movie, the best performance in that movie was yeah. uh, Patricia Arquette. Uh, we also have Laura Dern. For Wild, which I, I've always liked Laura Dern a lot. I think she's a great actress. I'm surprised she hasn't been nominated for more stuff because she's solid. Kira Knightley for The Imitation Game. No? Get out of here, fake Padme. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then lastly, Meryl Streep, Into the Woods. Some Disney uh, fantasy fairy tale crap. Meryl Streep's nominated every year, even if she's not in a movie. Yes. Uh, it's a given. So they, uh, <laughs> they get sued if she doesn't nominate it. If yeah. she wins for that. I, I doubt she will, but if she does, I'm sure she'll do her, her, her fake humbled, oh, people care about me, oh, yeah. that she's been doing for the last 30 years. She's playing the witch, as we've talked about before. Any actress over 50, they end up playing no, the witch. No, it's over 30, Jack. Over 30 now, yeah. okay. Yeah. Now Meryl Streep has joined the, the ranks of Fomka Jensen mm -hmm. and uh, Angelica Houston. Who else has played witches in movies? Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie, yeah. Um, did did uh, uh, Julia Roberts play a witch or something? I think so. There was like, a, was it Snow White or Cinderella or one of those fucking things? She's, a, she's the bad lady in it. And I said that should be a separate category too. Best uh, actress in the role of a witch. When your beauty starts to fade. We got plenty of witch rolls. <laughs> Come on down. Come on down. Uh, okay, so here's an interesting one. We got some things to say about best director. We have uh, Alejandro Gonzalez Inaritu. I'm sure I'm fucking that up horribly for Birdman. Uh, Bennett Miller, Foxcatcher. Uh, Wes Anderson, Grand Budapest Hotel. Uh, Morton Tile Dumb. The Imitation Game. Uh, and lastly, Richard Linklater for Boyhood. Richard Linklater. Really? It took 12 years to make. Okay, I guess that trumps everything. It doesn't matter, you know, and I like Richard Linklater. I've liked a number of his movies. Um, they're all very flat and naturalistic. That's the way they're supposed to look. There's nothing, there's nothing like filmic about them. It's just sort of just it's documenting movie, things. What do you want? Well, compare that to something like Birdman, which is this like carefully orchestrated, long takes, um, lots of energy, lots of visuals, uh, not to mention the performances. Like the fact that those two movies are in the same category is like a joke. The New York Times calls Boyhood one of the most extraordinary movies of 2014, or for that matter, the 21st century so far. The only one who could get away with filming a movie that looks like shit is Woody Allen. <laughs> He's been doing it for 40 years. Because uh, he, uh, the writing is good. Yeah. In Boyhood, the writing is not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> do, okay. do, you th do you think that it will win Best Director? Yeah. Really? It will win Best Because Director. it took 12 years to make. Yeah. Well, so, so what happens in the movie? And I was like, not much. Uh, so finally, we get the Best Picture. Yeah, Boyhood. Uh, we, okay, Best Picture, we have American's Sniper, uh, Birdman. Boyhood, uh, Grand Budapest Hotel, which that's kind of surprising. Usually there's more. I thought there were 10. Well, no, there's more movies listed. I'm just thinking like Grand Budapest Hotel, no actor nominations for that. Yeah, that's odd. Yeah, everybody's really great in that movie. The Imitation Game, Selma, The Theory of Everything, and Whiplash. All, all the best picture movies are about like a lead male character that's complex. 
Hmm. Or troubled or... So you're saying that the Best Picture uh, nominations is just a big sausage fest. This year it is. <laughs> uh, not, I mean, so yeah, this is a sexist and racist year. It's, it's almost like 90% of the Academy is, is, uh, is men. Uh, yeah, so that's the Oscars. Uh, it'll happen and then no one will care. Isn't it funny, there's always those movies that get, like it's a big deal the year it comes out and it gets nominated for a bunch of stuff, maybe it wins everything. And then a couple years later, no one even remembers it. The most recent example of that is The Artist. Do you remember The Artist? It's black and white, it's like an old silent film. Ah, da, da. Big deal, wins all these awards. Nobody cares or talks about that movie anymore. Did you see it? No. Oh God, it's working! Oh it's God, it's working. gonna happen. Oh God, that wasn't a fart. Oh no. Oh, what have I done? Oh shit. Oh. Hopefully not literally. Oh my God! Oh. Okay, now it's coming. Now this is, oh God! Oh God, it's gonna 